Welcome to Webomaniacs World of Wrestling. I am the Webomaniac, and this week we're going to be talking about holds and maneuvers, names and why so many for the same kind of hold. The pile driver, two types, both are protected. And speaking of protection, falling is real, landing is a skill. Talk of Undertaker and Hulk Hogan, real heat after Survivor Series involving just that, the pile driver. Match of the week, we're going to start talking about what we feel is our match of the week. I'll tell you mine coming up and other maneuvers such as the lariat also known as the clothesline the sharpshooter scorpion deathlock diamond cutter cutter and rko all the same maneuvers and getting beat with your own hold sign of respect or sign of humiliation. All that and much more here on Webomaniacs World of Wrestling. The following remarks are the sole opinion of one wrestling fan. It may not reflect the views and operations of WWE AEW or any other wrestling promotions. What are you doing? You're supposed to meet me out front. It's fine. And I'm here at your doorstep with the world heavyweight champion. Wow, that's yeah. strong, brother. <laughs> He's got Hulk and Andy wristbands on. Sign on the dotted line. I will, brother. And surrender the title to me. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Wow. What? your mouth we're gonna start out on the right foot i got something that'll keep you going all day long daddy don't worry about a thing brother this is the eye of the hulkster man you gotta get your head right oh, no. this is the only way to go Welcoming back to my show, not one, but two guests here. We're going to have my buddy uh, Austin Goudreau, who you saw last week. He'll be coming into the program. And, uh, you know, Austin, welcome back. We're also going to be having my buddy Joey Lunsford. He's out here in my neck of the woods and everything. Uh, we'll be talking to him about some of the same topics. I'll be asking you both the same type of questions. So when I put the question out, this goes out basically to both. And uh, one of the things that we're going to start talking about is holds and maneuvers. We told you what wrestling was last week or last, this past Thursday, and everything. Uh, but the types of holds, since we know that wrestling is, in fact, a performance art that is actually stage performance, that's why certain people that don't know what they're talking about want to just criticize and call it fake. To a, to a grandstand, it might be but the injuries are real and the magnificent performances put by these athletes are not in vain. Okay. With that said, let's talk about the holds. Let's talk about, let's talk about the pile driver, Austin and Joey, both of you. I'd like your take on what the pile driver, uh, can symbolize what it can mean and why is it banned in so many organizations, but yet 
you know, glorified when somebody like The Undertaker does it. Your thoughts? Thank you, David, and uh, I'm glad to be back. So my thoughts on the, the power driver is it could be a symbol of, per se, maybe dominance or something just to go along with the gimmick or the character, like The Undertaker's gimmick is a dead man. When he hits the when he hits the power driver, you tend to think about a grave digger. When that when that person goes down, they're being driven into the ground. Now, why would it be banned in other promotions, but yet glorified by uh, glorified when the Undertaker does it? Is because most, if not some of these. Uh, promotions they tend to not be very safe upon taking or performing said maneuver on the power driver i don't think it's any safe uh of, of anything because you could get hurt paralyzed this can explode out you know it should be bad because you on that thoughts I like that. I like that. I mean, uh, it's a grave digger. That's a, that's a good little, uh, reference there. I mean, who else, but when performing it, you know, known as a tombstone power driver is of course the, the undertaker. Um, but there's two ways of performing the power driver. If you remember, you can actually do it by uh, by having your uh, your legs go straight out from under you, kind of like a leg drop maneuver while you've got the person in the hold. Or you can do it the the uh, tombstone way, which in fact, which is what it was, which is when he drops to his knee. Uh, and when doing that, if, if I've watched a few clips, and I'm going to show you a clip following this, I'm going to show you a clip of actually a power driver, actually how it's being done, and even done from a school's teaching point of thanks to uh, the many videos out there on YouTube. Shout out to YouTube. And you can catch me on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash webomaniac every Thursday and Saturday at 6 p.m. I'll be posting the new show, the new episode. But, so I'll be showing you that clip You'll, You'll notice, notice that, that I have to, to if you ever did the, the, uh, the leg drop in professional, professional wrestling, wrestling, you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to land in an angle. angle. Okay, okay so, so what you're going to do is, is you have it bent like, like this, her shoulders, her shoulders will be, will be here, here, and that's, and that's where, where we will protect her on the pile drive. Okay? okay, so um, um, right here, uh, we have you down, boom, okay, we take her here, okay, we come over here so you can see her feet. I'm going to grab, grab her in that S lock, lock lift, lift up, up her legs, go straight, straight up, up just like that. that. She's, She's grabbing, grabbing the back, the back of, my of my thighs, thighs and, and I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and sit. No jump. jump. Oh. And uh, Austin, as far as The Undertaker versus Hulk Hogan with real heat after Survivor Series with the exact hold in question, the pub driver. Power driver on a steel chair, nonetheless. Okay. The one taking the hold, because the head is protected in the thigh region, the inner thigh, you know, so that actually protects the head and neck from the impact that someone like Stone Cold Steve Austin observed when Owen Hart did it. Um, but 
as far as like with when we're talking about trying to tell a story in a performance way and we're getting the point across of believability, can there, why can there actually be such heat between Undertaker and Hogan if both were the same type of performers out there leading you to believe one believability that the hold is, uh, is, is devastating and it hurt Hogan's neck after, afterwards, so he says, and Undertaker doesn't buy that at all because he was actually protected and he said his head never hit because the knees of the Undertaker took the blood. So, um, you know, it's, it's sort of like a, uh, uh, a contrast in, uh, in, in opinions to protect their namesakes. What say you? In that incident, Taker said Hogan's head was protected, and Hogan said, no, it hurt my neck. The contrast, it could be, it, it could, it could, it could be many things. It could be the ego getting the best of them. It could be Hogan thinking Taker didn't deliver the, the hold safely. Taker saying he did deliver the hold safety. But anything, anything can happen. I mean, it could have been botched. Hogan, Hogan could have shifted a bit when Taker went to drop him. It just all depends on the angle and how devastating they are trying to make the move look. It's all part of storytelling. Well, I uh, missed on the uh, on that because it takes practice and you know in precision. The both of them, uh, both of them uh, know what they're gonna do, but that accidents happen. And ask you a question: How many? Too many? Maybe two? Maybe three? And that is indeed correct. The the storytelling aspect of it with with H Hogan losing to The Undertaker at Survivor Series with Ric Flair's involvement to, sh to show, hey, I'm going to be a part of ending your Hulkamania as well here or, or something. Um, that, was the, that was the actual intricate storyline that gets fans like us driving. And that's what this is. This is a fan's opinion. This is not meant to... Uh, hurt any any companies, any other promotions uh, out there. This is strictly the opinion of the fans. Okay, I give you my take. My guests come on; they'll give you their take on it, and and, and everything like that. But we're gonna uh, shy away from the uh, pile driver, and we're gonna talk about falling and landing safe. Falling to me is real. Gravity is there it's going to do what it's going to do how you actually land to protect yourself and you might even have heard this in several matches where uh somebody is getting a is getting flipped or suflexed uh or, or something they they want to make sure they keep their head up or in or actually keep it down so that so, so that when the blow is withstood on a mat that is actually has a uh, padding underneath with boards uh, on under there to give that thud effect of so when they landing on those maneuvers it's 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 to the equivalent of just tussling around is is really all it is <laughs> Uh, but as far as the uh, landing, do you say you have to have a certain skill set to to do this and perform this and do it correctly? Because there's a lot of danger zones in in wrestling, and uh, to some extent, you know, are we uh, 
are we misogynistic by actually saying, okay, I'm waiting for this to happen? <laughs> when you're in that strong circle, and the skill set's got to be there. So if you don't have that self, you know, uh, skill, you can hurt yourself or you can go down and hurt yourself and put yourself on that shelf. You know, do not want to do that. Coming from a fan and someone who does wrestle, how you land definitely depends on impact. Say somebody's taking you for a DDT. In an aspect, when you do a DDT, you need need to make sure your head and chin are tucked downwards. Because if not, you land wrong, that's the end of your career, that's your neck. Now as far as falling flat on the back, you have to have a, a huge amount of skill set in order to pull off in the wrestling business what they call a bump. And at times, yes, we can be a little misogynistic to say, hey, we knew this was coming, or hey, we knew this was going to happen. So coming from someone who wrestles actually in in the ring in uh, backyard wrestling, uh, you know, I need to actually get back into talking a, a, a lot also about backyard wrestling versus these pros. How do you know when you're actually ready to do a particular maneuver if you haven't, as Joey said, practiced and, uh, you know, actually practiced the maneuver to actually get it right? And if the power driver is one that's going to be banned, are other maneuvers that are going to be done sloppily by upstarts not really knowing what they're doing are they going to cost some of the holds that we've had over these over these many years and decades practice is key yes but a lot of the because if you don't practice something anything and everything can go wrong like, practice a particular move, you say, no, I don't feel comfortable doing this, then you shouldn't do it. But for the up and up starters that are a little green, if they're going to pull off a move, they need to practice, 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 and make sure, hey, I got this down, because if not, and the move's done sloppily, like you, like the, like in terms of, um, then that somebody's career ended. Also not communicating on what hold or move you're gonna you're gonna do next to your opponent is is a big no no. Okay, Austin, as we're talking about holds and everything, let's talk about the ones that are actually named different names but mean the same impactful maneuver. Such things as the Lariat which we know from Stan the Lariat Hansen. You know, he he throws that he throws that arm and bam, you're down. Throughout the business, it's always been known as a clothesline. Then of course you got JBL's clothesline from hell. You know, um and and, and stuff like that. The sharpshooter Bret Hart, Scorpion Deathlock, Sting, the Cutter, the Diamond Cutter, the RKO, same maneuvers. RKO comes, says RKO out of nowhere. That's simply a Cutter. I don't know why such things need to be glorified for people that, you know, they're they're doing maneuvers, and. Another thing I want to talk about is the fact that uh, just recently, Will Ospreay used another performer's um, hold, and he's not mad about it at all. And that's AJ Styles when he when Will Ospreay used the uh, Styles Clash 
a couple of times actually in a match, which he loves to do actually on big high paying matches, you know, uh, pay-per-views, PLEs, as it were, uh, or something. And, um, you know, th things like that. Holds of the same names. Why? You know, that's a question that's always puzzled me, okay? Why would you take credit from the person who originated the move and use it as your own. Granted, yes, there's different variations, but there comes a time when using the same maneuver that was used by another person, in my opinion, tends to get overplayed. Like you said, stand with the lariat, JBL, with clothesline from hell, all the same thing. Just like Diamond Dallas Page with the cutter, RK, uh, Randy Orton with the RKO. The originator of the move always made the move more effective. These day and age, wrestlers use the move. Oftentimes, it's not as effective as, per se, the person that used it before them. Now, as far as the stuff with Osprey um, and AJ Styles not having a problem with it, you see a lot of times in a lot of aspects where... A wrestler uses another wrestler's hold, and that particular wrestler tends to have a problem with him using said hold. Okay, take a hold, for example, like the DDT. Okay, for years, after Jake did it, after he originated the hold and used it, uh, he called it, he finally like broke silence once in a while there or something and he actually said it means Damien's dinner time okay that's what DDT means then you've got other uh, flying high flying superstars that uh, Jake never really was known for as as any kind of really high off the ropes type superstar he liked to keep you grounded and then loved to just put you in the ground with that DDT and it was over more people are getting up from, from maneuvers like the DDT, and to me, it actually diminishes it or something. Then you have somebody that comes off of the, 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 the top rope, and they call it a tornado DDT, but yet it's still given the name DDT. So Jake is honored and glorified in these wrestlers using that said hold, but in ways... To have more of an impact, whereas more people were getting up from from it, unless Jake himself was delivering it. If Jake delivered it, you were staying down. Other people that seem to want to deliver it, they don't sell the move as much. And we call selling a move by actually staying down, showing more of an impact of, of what the person did to you, and you can even oversell. Just ask The Rock. Oh, wait a minute. It doesn't matter what you think. That's exactly right, David. Over time, moves begin to diminish in value. Wrestlers these day and age done got to the point where they'll no-sell. And, and no-sell, for me, is a, is a, a dead giveaway as to, do I really want to put this person over? Do I really, do I really want to put this person over? I mean, it, it's, it's just, it's just got to the point where every time I see a move that's supposed to be effective, and it fin, and it's supposed to finish the match, like Jake and a DDT, it never finishes said match. This day and age, it takes two or three moves just to finish one said match. No selling is the in the business is something that needs to be cracked down on to protect kayfabe and what the business really stands for. Stories and the telling of a story if that person is supposed to put said person over in match. Okay, Austin, uh... Uh, Joey has uh, 
uh, vacated here, and uh, he's he's uh, sort of just on his way out for for something. So uh, it's going to be the rest of the show. It's going to be you and me per usual here, which uh, actually I wouldn't have it any other way. This is actually pretty cool. Um, now, in elaborating on your last point and what you talked about, about um, about no selling and putting someone over or uh, that other person's ego getting in the way of not putting that person over, it does need to be dealt with. It really does. I think um I think for the sake of the storytelling and the aspect of keeping the fans enthralled you know enthralled would be more of a better word than just you know keeping kayfabe alive or something certain certain people already pulled that curtain back when they did uh the curtain call involving uh t- involving the click and everything as as we've sometimes documented on uh on previous shows that uh may have got lost in my archives here uh but we could actually rehatch that one at a later point too when we talk about the click and the and the curtain call that actually uh pulled the curtain on kayfabe uh away from the business but yet the believability is what I'm calling it, the believability of what you're seeing presented to you in their storyline terms performed on that stage, the squared circle, for us, the fans, to get on the edge of our seats for and and everything. Now, we've discussed holds and how dangerous they could actually really be and the and the purpose of banning certain ones, if not done correctly. Now let's talk about blading, blading and bleeding. What say you about blading and bleeding? And uh, uh, should should blood be part of the kayfabe, as you say, to make a person more believable of what's taking place in that ring? In my opinion, as a fan, I do believe to keep us enthralled in a story as far as, you know, a very, very heated storyline, there should be blood involved just to to put to life um, the intent and the hatred the hill, the hatred the person has for said person and storyline. But also, I think blood should be a big part of ending a rivalry in a match. Because rivalries cause bad blood. Okay, if rivalries cause bad blood, give us blood to get us more enthralled and invested in the storyline you're putting out between two people. A good example of a great match that just came flashing back to my mind as you were describing that towards your point would be, in fact, Eddie Guerrero versus Rey Mysterio. The constant, and I believe it was an I quit type of match back in that day and and everything. And, uh, you know, in an I quit match, anything goes. So yes, you should be able to bleed. And an I quit match is is sort of a symbolism for the end to a rivalry. But to me, the end all be all for a ending of a rivalry without interference is in fact the steel cage. Should normal TV display more steel cages or is that more fitting for a paid based performance what say you so i believe 
TV should show more steel cages and not just save them for the big shows because a steel cage match not only culminate, uh, culminates a good rivalry but it also sends out ratings and it also attracts your demographic that you're trying to play to and also wrestling fans alike because you turn on the TV you say hey oh there's gonna be a steel cage tonight I gotta tune in and watch that but in my opinion I believe steel cages should be on TV but also PLEs just as Web of Maniacs World of Wrestling on Thursdays and Saturdays here on YouTube and Facebook catch us uh, when you can for the next episode uh, just as w when you're with what you're saying there ab about that and as we talk about wrestling being a performance stage performance art don't you think that if you were to uh, that, that you could have all the best of all the worlds of and corner all markets if in fact you would tell fans on a regulatory basis for what you're watching is a performed art and this way the kids you talk about the demographic you want to attract the kids this way things don't have to always stay PG okay we we had that and so much got turned off from that, which is why I mentioned about blading and bleeding and bringing it in. And, uh, you know, should one even cut themselves or should the blood actually be, I, I don't know, Cairo syrup fake or something? Since so many want to call wrestling fake, why not give them fake blood? What say you? Here's my thing. Blood capsules and the rest of the stuff wouldn't really captivate and tell the story like it's supposed to. One should blade and actually bleed in order to get the story across. But as for the kids, I think, as a fan, in my opinion, if something like that is to take place, they should put a warning at the start of live show, pay-per-view, or TV sh or the or TV show, because that way the kids will know, hey, this is going to happen. The parents then can make the decision as to, hey, if they want the kids to watch it or not. To me, blood and blading is everything when it comes to professional wrestling. Because how are you going to make the fans believe that this is real if in fact you're using blood capsules or something of that nature? Back to you, David. Well, just a little follow-up to that. Uh, you talk about capsules and, and things. That makes me think of uh, the days of uh, the Great Muda and now Asuka actually uh, doing the very same thing that the Kabuki the great Kabuki did all the all those years ago, and uh, and that is, of course, they've got those things loaded into their their mouths to spew out this stuff of color to you know I I, I don't I I I always wondered why are they doing that in those different colors? I mean, is it? Uh, that's that's not Taco Bell on the mat or or anything like that. It's not like it's not like it was a a, a bad case of indigestion or or something. Uh, and then oh okay we got we got green mist here or or something. Uh, the the avocado salad didn't agree with you, you know, or 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 something like that. Uh, but uh, in in all seriousness and and everything, it it placates to uh, to give more of a dynamic of, of of a different sort of dynamic, a dimension of the reflection of that of that superstar 
out there. And uh, it, it just, it signifies either strength or if the move is missed, then it signifies the strength of the one that you were trying to get it with or something. And one's going over, one's going under, one way or the, or, or the other. That's how it's going to roll. Um, but uh, uh, on this last topic, I want to talk about, and, and we touched on it on the last show, about, about when you're storytelling and giving us the same thing over and over again, how many times can we see a, a partner get hurt on the, on, on the apron inadvertently only to turn on their partner within the match. You saw it with Rick Martel and Tito Santana. You saw it with Hulk Hogan and Paul Orndorff when Orndorff actually performed what? The pile driver on Hogan. Okay, that just sends us all the way around full circle here. But what I want to talk about is, is the aspect of um, what do you think was your most entertaining match of the week since last Thursday, since this past Thursday, we've had we've had Friday Night SmackDown, we've had Rampage. I'll be watching Collision to uh, to tonight, uh, and then of course Monday Night Raw. You know, uh, uh, NXT Tuesday and Dynamite Wednesday. So wrestling, wrestling to me has got. The time slots down. They need to stay right where they are in in all aspects, to be honest with you. But what I want to tell you about is my match of the week, particularly something that did not generate a boring storyline or a boring predictive point in the match of. I didn't see any... Uh, um, you know, suicide dives to the outside only for them to go to the commercial break during the match involving Andrade versus Carmelo Hayes is my match of the week. I'd like to know what yours are. I honestly can say I do not have a match. I don't have a match of the week. Um, I... I, I, I simply, I don't, I, I don't have, I don't have a match of the week. I mean, it, I, I don't, I don't have, I don't have really, I don't have one. The Camar, the Camar, Carmelo Hayes and on Andrade was a good one, and I only seen the highlights of that one. Well, that's okay, Austin. You know, like I said, uh. This is just this is just for the fans and and everything. I mean that's honesty, you know. You didn't you didn't really have a match of the week because I guess you didn't really know I was going to do something like this, you know, in in asking you it, uh, for a match of the week. But the reason that mine is Andrade versus Carmelo Hayes, and Carmelo Hayes came out of NXT. Andrade, he also. Uh, emerged from N N NXT, but he also had other uh, other places that he wrestled out in AEW and and things like that. And uh, but but in Andrade versus Carmelo Hayes, and I really suggest anyone watching this, you should check out SmackDown if it's if it's taped or or if you have it where you can rewatch it on your uh, on your network. Or something. Uh, go ahead and and actually, you know, rewatch that one. That gave to me the clarity of of randomness in maneuvers in what they did to counter each uh, maneuver. It did not look like uh, they were uh, doing handstands or flip-flops or looking like each one's going to do the same maneuver 
or, or something. They actually, to, to my taste involving wrestling, to me, they had a legit contest of, of domination. And uh, Andrade, he did come out with the win on that, but Carmelo, great showing on his part and everything, and um, I'm not the greatest uh, NXT fan, but this guy originated out of NXT and uh, has made it to the main roster. Uh, you climb a little bit at a time there, you know, before you become the queen that rises to the top. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but with that, we're going to let you go here, Austin. We're gonna uh, we're gonna close up, and uh, we thank you for being part of Webomaniacs World of Wrestling. Catch us every Thursday and Saturday here on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you for having me, David. It's always a pleasure to step on the cast and discuss all things wrestling. <laughs>